show you a little bit about what I have connected here. Now this is kind of cool. This is an M.2 SSD card. You can see the little tiny card in there. Uh, now this is a 64 gig version that happens to be connected to a 44 pin IDE interface. I was originally going to use this on my A1200, but it just it just didn't work right. I, ju I just wasn't happy with, with how it was recognizing it and how reliable it was. So now I've got it plugged into this USB. Uh, it's, this is a USB 3.0 interface. It works at 2.0 speeds. Um, into this 44 pin adapter. So I've got a 64 gig SSD drive plugged right into my Amiga. Now, in this case, I've got this partition formatted to about a 52 gigabyte partition called data. And then I have a couple of these other smaller partitions, scratch one and scratch two, that I save files to. Let's take a look at the performance of something like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to launch sysinfo. Now please forgive how this looks. I'm using a, a mode promoter to bring sysinfo up on my RTG screen. Go into drives. Now my basic hard drives are 15,000 RPM SCSI drives. So they are zippity doo dah day fast. 9 megabits per second. I've got these drives here, ADH1, ADH2, these are my drives that are on my little M.2 SSD drive down here. 6.5 megabits per second. There we are, 6.5 megabits per second. Uh, now here's a cool thing. You see I've got my card reader down here which has a USB uh, connection, an SD card, CF card, uh, all kinds of little interfaces. Now, you may be wondering how I have that connected since my XSurf card only has two USB interfaces on it uh, built right into it, and I can't use the header that you'd normally use in this case. So what I've got is this very clever little device. Here's my, my cable for my USB card reader, and that goes to this little hub right here, which has these two cables running through the back of the Amiga, right to here. So it gives me my little um, 9 or 10 pin connector that's required to run. Now let's take a look at some real world data transfers here. The scratch drive here is a partition, a 4 gig partition on my SSD drive. And what we're going to do is we're going to move a couple of files over into there. So we'll go pick some nice big files. Here's one. This is Breath of the Wild MPEG. It's 21 megabytes. We're going to just copy it right over. Yes, it's already there. We're going to replace. And that 21 meg file being transferred from my SCSI drive over the USB, what was that? Eight seconds, 10 seconds, pretty darn speedy. Even something fairly large, like this Aquaman trailer, this is a 64 megabyte file. Now imagine back in the day how long it would take to transfer a 64 megabyte file over an Amiga. Place. Even now, look at that, nice lickety split, reliable, from my SCSI drives over to my USB SSD drive. This is really taking the Amiga up into the, uh, at least, 1999. Now, one thing that's important is the playback capability. Uh, playing back these files from the USB, what we're going to do is we're going to load up our Breath of the Wild. This is a 21 megabyte file. We are going to do it with audio and we're going to see how it plays back over USB. Now this, when I used to try to play this back over my thylacine USB that would give me about 384 kilobytes per second, worthless, almost nothing, just jittery, 
nothing at all. But here, playing it back over the SSD drive, plays back fine. And this Ham 6 video plays back just fine right off of the USB interface. I could never do that before with my thylacine. I'd have to have that on my SCSI drive so I prefer to play back properly. So, let's talk real world here. This Rapid Road USB interface is absolutely fantastic. Jens and the guys from individual computers went above and beyond in creating this piece of hardware. It is absolutely incredible. Slots right in, works and performs beautifully. Now, things I'm not particularly fond of. Number one, the documentation. The documentation is lousy. Now, most of us have colored printers, colored laser printers even. The guys at individual computers really need to do a little something more than a little two-page thing. Now this is the Rapid Road that I purchased that has both the A1200 and the interface for the XSurf. This little documentation has nothing, nothing at all, even mentioning plugging it into an XSurf, even though it works fine. Just spend the extra two cents and print out a four-page manual that also goes over the connection to an XSurf. It's not hard to do. I can just go online, get the, the information off of there, and just supply it. Also, print out some pictures. Print out some pictures of the interface. Print out some pictures of the connections. So, you know, we don't have to go online and look and see where everything has to go. Uh, mention someplace, somewhere, that you can't use both of the interfaces, uh, the two USB on the XSurf and the 9-pin slot on there. Just mention it in passing that you have to use just one interface. I couldn't find it anywhere. And it's something that takes just a moment of their time to do, just a moment of their time, and maybe a little ink out of their laser printer to print these out. They're not. They're not they're not distributing hundreds of thousands of these. These are in the in the hundreds or maybe thousands over the years to us Amiga users. It's not that big a deal. Just do the instructions right, print them out correctly. So, how would I rate this? Hardware, performance, absolute, five Amiga Boing Balls out of five. Without a doubt. Five Amiga Boing Balls out of five. Absolutely love it. Uh, software. I wish that they would keep have kept up on updating Poseidon. I know Chris Hodges, the guy that did it, is no longer in the Amiga 3.9 community, so I get it. But it'd be nice if you know maybe they just open source this so other people could write drivers for newer USB devices. Very little that I've thrown at it that it can't understand and read, but you know it's nice to keep up. So I would say software, considering that it's a pain in the rear to get it downloaded off their website and migrated over to the Amiga. It's more difficult than it should be. I give software four Amiga check marks out of five. Works fine. They could do better. Now, where they're failing, like I've mentioned, is the documentation. Just do a better job. Just, just make it more clear. Print out an extra page. Put in all of the instructions for all of your components. You know, do something like telling us that the little plastic cover here has to be removed in order to use it with the XSurf. It just it doesn't doesn't say it anywhere. It's not that hard to figure out, but it's also not that hard to write in a, on a piece of paper. If you use this on the XSurf, remove the plastic cover. I'm going to rewrite their documentation email it to Jens and say, hey, use this. We'll see what he says. So, documentation, I would say three Commodore chicken heads out of five for the documentation. They really need to improve that. This thing's a must-buy. Even if you don't upgrade your IDE 
on your Amiga 1200 or your Amiga 4000, okay, fine. Use the cheap little IDE that's built in. At least get yourself a rapid road USB interface to use so you can actually get some decent performance out of your equipment. Five to six megabytes, megabits per second on a big box Amiga. On an Amiga 1200, from what I understand, maybe 700 to 1 megabit per second uh, data transfers, which are still, you know, acceptable um, when you use it on the clock board. In a nutshell, get this thing. It's fantastic. This is Doug from Dynamic Computing, signing out.